All right, so now we're moving into the whole, is it substitution, is it elimination, what type? And uh, we're gonna start that out by recapping kind of what different things mean for SN1 or SN2 or E1 or E2. So uh, the first part of that is the alkyl halide type. So we have primary alkyl halide here, a secondary alkyl halide, and a tertiary alkyl halide here. So when we're thinking about SN1 versus SN2, um, which of these would be really good at SN1? Which of these would be really good at SN2? Um, so this is thinking back to chapter 7, but um, maybe write all on this side best at SN1 or SN2 and write at this side best at SN1 or SN2. Um, pause it, do that, and then come back. All right, you did that. You thought about it a lot. Hard to remember back to that chapter, but um, a primary... I guess yeah, we'll start over here. A tertiary alkyl halide with substitution chemistry, it's really hard for the nucleophile to get to the back side of that halogen. Remember, in an SN2 reaction, the nucleophile is adding to the back face of that, and it's the antibonding orbital. It's really small. It's really hard to get to when you have carbons all around it with hydrogens. Um, so, SN2 is really challenging to work on a really substituted alkyl halide because the nucleophile has a really hard time getting to that antibonding orbital. Um, so SN2 is not going to work very well around on this one. Um, what about SN1 on this one? Well, SN1 requires the formation of a carbocation. And what's the most stable type of carbocation? A tertiary carbocation is most stable. So this side is best at... E or SN1 um, because it's going to form that tertiary carbocation. This side, this is a primary alkyl halide. There's quite a bit of accessibility to that sigma star, that antibonding orbital right there. So this side is going to be best at SN2. Um, so this arrow going this way is increasing SN2 rate. And this arrow going that direction um, has increasing SN1 rate. Um, so so that ha that's how that works with, with uh, substitution. Um, but something's a little bit different with elimination. We already see that, right? We had one arrow going this way, one arrow going that way with substitution. But with elimination, both arrows are going this way. Um, and when we think about rate of E1, it's going to be based on the same factors that an SN1 reaction would be, fit, would be based on, uh, the carbocation um, stability. This is going to form the most stable carbocation, so this would be um, the best at SN1. We want a really stable carbocation because formation of that carbocation is the rate determining step. What about E2? What impacted the rate of E2? Um, the rate of E2 is most impacted by the substitution of the resulting alkene. The more substituted, the more stable. If we de deprotonated this hydrogen here in an E2 reaction, we're going to have a, a, a tri-substituted um, alkene as the product, and the partial alkene character in that intermediate is going to make the activation energy be lowest um, compared to these other two. So both E1 and E2 um, are best, or I guess we'll not write best over here, but essentially both E1 rate and SN, sorry, both E1 rate and E2 rate increase in the same direction. So we have fastest E1 slash E2 and with the primary alkyl halide, this is the slowest, the slowest E1, E2. Um, so that, again, is a difference between substitution and elimination. Alkyl halide ID, so whether it's primary, secondary, tertiary, has no effect has no effect on E1 versus E2. Um, so here it had a big effect on, e, on SN1 versus SN2, but down here there's no effect of the alkyl halide substitution on what type of reaction pathway occurs. Um, so 
Now we're going to talk about a nucleophile because that's going to be super important. All right, so you have a given alkyl halide. What do we look at next for um, what type of reaction is going to occur? Say it's, say it's a secondary alkyl halide, right? Because secondary is kind of in the middle. Um, it's not great for SN1, not great for SN2, not great for E1, not great for E2. What's going to control the outcome then? Um, and it turns out that the biggest outcome indicator combined with the alkyl halide type is the nucleophile strength. And uh, we've defined what a strong base, a strong nucleophile is. Uh, we did that in chapter seven. Um, and those strong bases, those strong nucleophiles, we call them strong, but they're also reactive, right? Reactive things want to react. And what we mean by that and, and how that really impacts this type of chemistry is that strong bases, strong nucleophiles, they quote, I'm going to put this in quotes because it's not really a chemical term, they don't wait around um, for carbocation formation. So they're reactive. They want to react now. They don't want to wait for the halogen to decide to leave. They're going to force the halogen to leave. That's what strong bases, strong nucleophiles do. Um, so that means we are always, that we will always be bimolecular if we have a strong base or nucleophile. So essentially the choices if we have a strong base or a strong nucleophile are, is it E2 or is it SN2? And then I'm going to put one more or, or is it a mixture of the two? Because it turns out um, it could be that as well. What about weak bases and nucleophiles? Well, um, they are not very strong. They're not very reactive. They're pretty stable on their own. They're, they're good to chill. Um, because of that, they can't force bimolecular reactions. They can't force bimolecular reactions. Um, what does that mean? They only do E1 and SN1 then. So, um, so if you have a weak base or a weak nucleophile, the answer is that it always has to be one of three things. Sorry, I guess one of two things. It, it can either be a mixture of E1 and E, sorry, of E1 and SN1, because remember on the last, in the last, very recently, we said that um, when SN1 happens, E1 also happens. Um, but also, uh, so, so that's one outcome, is that it would be a mixture of E1 and SN1. But E1 and SN1 can't occur. They never occur. Never occur when the alkyl halide is primary. Why was that again? Well, let's look at a primary alkyl halide. So if we had a primary alkyl halide like that, we have a weak nucleophile like this. Um, the, the actual answer here is that this is going to be no reaction. If it was a reaction, what would be the first step? The first step would be the alkyl halide leaving. That would produce this. This is a primary carbocation. And the situation is primary carbocations are really reactive. They are really unstable. So they never form. They never form. So if we have a weak base, a weak nucleophile, and we have a secondary or a tertiary alkyl halide, that can do some chemistry because a secondary or a tertiary carbocation can form. But um, if it's a primary alkyl halide, uh, it's just going to do nothing. It's just going to sit there and look at you. Um, so it would be no reaction. Um, so Alkyl halide substitution and nucleophile strength and base strength are the things that really impact what reaction pathway we're going to do. And now we're going to move on to looking at different molecules and um, just trying to figure it out. What, what's going to be, what's going to occur here? What type of reaction? Let's predict the products, etc. All right. So based on what we just talked about, what are we going to have here? Um, this is a good opportunity for you guys to pause the video, take a minute, look at what do we got? What kind of alkyl halide? What kind of nucleophile? How is that going to impact the reaction outcome? What's going to happen? 
So take a minute to do that. Okay, we did it. And you got it right, but let's just make sure. Well, what do we got? Uh, the things that we have to think about the most are what type of nucleophile we have. So this is a weak nucleophile slash base. Um, so weak nucleophile slash base, what do those do? They chill, man. They're just like, yeah, I'll react if there's something really reactive to react with. But like, they're like, oh, I'm pretty good all alone, man. I'm chill. Um, so what we have to look at then is, well, will a really reactive species exist? Um, so what do we have here? We have a alkyl bromide. And if we had to classify this, this is a secondary alkyl bromide. Um, while a secondary carbocation is not the most stable type of carbocation, it is still stable enough um, to form. So it's not going to form at an outrageous rate, but it will form at some rate. So um, this will form a carbocation. It, this bromine really wants all those electrons. It wants to take it to them and have its own octet. So when it does that, it's going to form this carbocation um, and Br minus as well. The Br minus is just like at this point it's like oh I love being all alone I'm a great leaving group I'm all good on my own. Um, and at this point our nucleophile slash base is like oh that's really reactive I'm gonna react with that. Um, and this was a unimolecular reaction this was the ionization step. So what's gonna happen? Well this can add directly to that that would be an SN1 reaction or it can pull off one of all of these different hydrogens. Any of them are available for that E1 reaction. So essentially, one reaction pathway would be the elimination reaction pathway. That would produce as the partial product, the cyclohexene, so the alkene. Um, the other reaction pathway would be if the water molecule, the water nucleophile, adds directly to that, that will make the intermediate where essentially the oxygen is now unstable because it's positively charged. It wants to become neutral again. We're in a lot of this. This is our reactant, but it's also our solvent, so there's a lot of it around. So another water molecule can just grab that proton away to make the other products. So the, the, the organic products of this reaction are going to be the alkene and the substitution product. So this was the E1 product and this is the SN1 product. And we said if one of them happens, if SN1 happens, E1 also happens. Um, so we're going to keep on this path. We're going to do a lot of these in, in the remaining videos to kind of walk through all of the different options.